Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth and welcome to episode 9 of our video series, Avid Tips and Techniques. Today I'm in beautiful Devonport, which is on the north shore of Auckland Harbour in New Zealand. This is North Head, which enjoys some spectacular views of Auckland Harbour and some of the nearby islands. And it's an ideal location to show you one of the many cool things that you can do with Avid Intraframe Editing. This is a view of Rangitoto Island just offshore. As nice a view as this is, I think I would like to place a second island just behind it to add interest. Now you could do this with an animat, but this time I'm going to use the clone mode of the paint effect. Besides, I need to do some things with this island a little bit later on. So let's see how it's done. The first step is to open up the effect palette, go to the image category, take a paint effect from that category and drop it onto the segment in the timeline. Now I'm going to open up my effects editing tool set. Now my effects editing tool set will probably look a lot different to yours because I've customised it pretty heavily. For more information on customising tool sets, have a look at episode 3 in this series. Now I need to use the polygon tool. This will help me to create control points and draw a shape around the island. I'm not too concerned with drawing the shape exactly because I can always tidy it up later. Once the shape is complete, I can use the reshape tool to fine tune it. But before we start fine tuning the shape, we need to see clearly where the edge of the shape is relative to the island. To do this, I will select Outline from the Fast menu. This will place a thin outline around the shape and make the edge of the island a lot easier to see. Right, in nature, there are very few dead straight lines. Nearly everything is made up of lines of varying curvature. So in this case, it's best to turn the corner points that I just created into curve points and fine tune the shape that way. Now because some of the island's details are relatively small, I'm going to zoom into it using the zoom in tool. Once I've zoomed in far enough, I can then hold down Ctrl and Alt to move the image around in the effect preview window to see it more clearly. I can then activate my reshape tool to turn the corner points into curve points. To do this, I need to hover the cursor over the point and alt click it. This same procedure will turn a curve point into a corner point again. Once it is a curve point, you will notice the presence of these handles. They're common in drawing programs and are called bezier handles. As I drag the handles, both handles are linked in direction and magnitude. But as the curvature on each side of the point needs to be different, I must break the relationship between the handles so I can move them independently. To do this, I need to Alt-click one of the handles. Now, both handles are independent of one another. As I move from point to point, I do the same thing to each set of handles, breaking their initial relationship and adjusting the curves to follow the edge of the island. Now you will probably have completely different handle configurations at each point, and that's normal because the curves really will be different in each case. Now don't worry if the curves aren't perfect first time. Achieving high quality results with bezier handles really does take a lot of practice, and if you make a mistake, you can always undo. Now the shape is complete, I need to do two more things to it. Firstly, the shape has a very hard edge to it. To assist it to blend more evenly with the background, a small amount of feathering needs to be applied to the edge. So I'm going to open up the feathering parameter group and apply a horizontal feathering of about two and a vertical feathering also of about two. The next thing I need to do is to turn this shape into a clone shape. This will copy the contents of the shape and paste it somewhere else. With the shape selected, I now choose Clone from the Fast menu. Now I can move the shape to a new position, and you can see a clone of the selected area will move to the new location. Now there's a problem, isn't there? I originally wanted the cloned island to be behind the original island, but we can fix that with an erase shape. 
an erased shape will cut a hole through the clone shape back to the original island, therefore creating the illusion of a layer. Now, because the erase shape needs to be exactly the same shape as the clone shape, I can make a copy of the clone shape, place it on top of the original island, and that saves me having to spend the time to create a brand new shape from scratch. So, I'm going to select the shape and choose Edit, Copy, or I can use Control c Then, choose Edit, Paste, or Control v Now this places an exact copy of the shape over the original. As the copy is selected, I need to turn it into an erase shape by choosing Erase from the Fast menu. Now I can move the erase shape over the top of the original island. This cuts a hole through the cloned island, so now I can see the original. So now my islands are correctly layered, but the clone still looks a bit wrong. Because it's meant to be further away, I need to make it look distant by changing the colour and the contrast, so I need another shape. To do this, I can copy and paste another island shape precisely over the top of the original. Again, I will select the shape, go to the Edit menu and choose Copy, then choose Paste. I will now turn this shape into a lighten shape by choosing Lighten from the Fast menu. This gives the impression that the island is obscured by a bit of sea mist and makes it appear further away. You can see the problem here, can't you? Each new object you draw is laid up on top of older objects. So even though the clone and erase shapes are in the correct order, the colorized shape needs to be moved behind the erase shape but still on top of the clone shape. And yes, we can fix that too. With the lighten shape selected, I can now use the send backward button to send it back one layer at a time. And because it only needs to go back one layer, I only need to click this once. Job done. Well, that's just a few things that you can do with the Avid Paint Effect. Kind of cool, isn't it? Until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.